What's your big takeaway from the way this year has started? The big takeaway is what we saw in October where everything rotated right out of the Magnificent Seven that was the place to be in the early 2023. Everything has shifted now and you're seeing your interest rate sensitive things like small caps, real estate, um, energy are actually all starting to outperform. And I think that's only going to continue as we look into 2024. And that's where you're seeing some of the euphoria with artificial intelligence is going away. People really want to see that actually reflected in earnings. And I think things are going to go back to fundamentals. And that's where you want to look at some of those value opportunities. I mean, it's not like you've had, you know, a ton of money coming out of mega caps and going into the Russell. I mean, it's, it's been a pretty equal opportunity sell off. I mean, the Nasdaq and the Russell both are down about the same on the week, each more than 3%. So what is that telling us? And I don't think we want it too much extrapolate from this one week. I think really if you go back the last two months, I think that's actually going to show a stronger picture here. And some of that is you're going to get um, people are just taking profits across the board right now because it's kind of interesting. But the um, investor sentiment levels have been overly optimistic. Yet at the same time, we're seeing this with our clients. People are still very cautious and they're keeping their cash on the sidelines. If you look at cash levels, the end of um, that last week of December, cash levels actually went up, meaning even though people are say they're optimistic with the markets, people think the interest rates are coming down. They're still keeping their money in cash. I mean, they're not actually ready to get in the markets. They're not actually believing that those money market rates are going to go down. And it's not necessarily we're advising, but you're definitely seeing that right now. But does that mean that, you know, some of that next leg is going to be a bit muted because there's just not enough cash, new money coming in? I would actually say that still leads to an opportunity because that money can still lead its way in. I oh, think you, people you aren't think overly people aren't overly optimistic. They're not throwing all their money into the markets. You're not seeing that euphoria. I actually think that could lead to a fur further um, upward trend. You sound like you're a believer in the idea, though, of that rotation being longer lasting. Money coming out of Absolutely. mega cap winners and going into other unloved areas or small caps or, or, or what have you. Absolutely. And we're actively talking to our clients to that about right now, um, because if you didn't rebalance your account so far, you're going to be overweight in technology in those seven companies. And especially I have a lot of people who say, oh, no, no, I've got an S&P 500 fund and a total market fund. I'm good. You have no idea that about 30 percent of that is those seven companies. And if you haven't made a change in your portfolio, you're going to want to take some of those profits and add to other areas. I'm not getting out of the Magnificent Seven. I just want to take some profits there and take some better opportunities. What if it's a giant head fake, though? You know, I look at that ISM services today and I say that's the one thing that you cannot have deteriorate. Mm -hmm. This whole notion that, you know, even Janet Yellen, the Treasury Secretary today, said in an interview that the, the, we can describe what we're seeing now as a soft landing. And my hope is that it continues. But what if the economy continues to soften a bit more than it is now? Still stays out of recession, but continues to be a little bit weak. Doesn't that take some of the oomph off of those other more cyclical uh, and small cap areas of the market? Um, not necessarily, because we need the economy to soften to a certain extent so that interest rates do, in fact, come down, right? Expectations are there, but we need a softening for inflation to continue to come down. It's just we don't want to soften so much we go into recession, right? So it's that kind of that perfect scenario that we need to get into. And I think that's what you saw with the jobs numbers today. It was kind of bringing into reality the fact that, yes, the economy is softening, but we still have a really strong labor market. And I think when people are expecting those six to seven rate cuts next year, they're probably getting a little overly optimistic. I think rates are probably still coming down, just maybe not as much as people had gotten excited about in the last two months.